Uh, Madam President, I rise in strong support of this S-CHIP legislation, and I find it amazing uh, that we have spent so much time debating it. Uh, this S-CHIP legislation uh, would help uh, more than 4 million children in this country get the health insurance they desperately need, uh, but I should point out that it leaves approximately 3 million kids still uninsured. And Madam President, as you well know, uh, the United States of America remains today the only major country in the industrialized world where this debate would take place. So we're spending weeks discussing an issue which every other country in the industrialized world has long resolved. So if we pass this piece of legislation tomorrow, and I hope we will, three million kids still remain without health insurance. And the common sense of insuring children is apparent to everybody. Because when you insure a kid, when you allow a parent to bring a child to a doctor, when a kid has access to medical care in a school, professionals can pick up the medical problems that kids have so that 10 years later, children do not end up in a hospital with a serious illness and we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to cure a child whose problem could have been detected when he or she was little. This really is a no-brainer. And clearly what we must do as a nation is move to a national health care program guaranteeing health care to all of our people, but a step forward will be passing this S-CHIP legislation. Uh, Madam President, I think the American people are more than aware uh, that our health care system is substantially broken. Uh, they understand that not only do 46 million Americans have no health insurance, they understand that even more are underinsured. They understand the absurdity of tying health care to our jobs, because when we lose our jobs, then we lose our health care. And I think most Americans, and I hear some of my friends saying, oh, the American people don't want government health care. Well, you know what? Read the polls. The American people do believe that the United States government should take the responsibility of providing health care to every man, woman, and child. And I hope that as soon as possible, we in fact do that. But not only do we have 46 million Americans, include many children, and that issue we are trying to deal with right now, have no health insurance. What we also are doing, because of the waste and inefficiency of our current system, we end up spending far more per capita on health care than do the people of any other country. And I know the, the chair right now, the president, is more than aware that General Motors, for example, spends more on health care than they do on steel in building automobiles. What kind of sense is that? So at a certain point that I hope soon, we as a nation end up finally saying health care is a right of all people. The absurdity that one child in this country does not have health insurance is an international embarrassment. Let's go forward and let's develop the most cost-effective way that we can provide health care to all of our people. Now, here's the irony, that even if tomorrow we guaranteed health care to all of our children, even if the next day we guaranteed health care to all of our people, you know what, that does not mean that people are going to be able to find doctors or dentists. Our infrastructure, especially in primary care, is so, uh, it is in such a bad condition that we need to revolutionize primary health care uh, in America. Uh, we just had a hearing uh, chaired by Senator Hawken, uh, who has been very active in the whole issue of preventative care in the health committee. This is unbelievable. We had a physician who is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School in a state where presumably they have universal health care. She can't find a primary health care physician. A professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School can't find a primary health care physician. That's how absurd this issue, the situation is. We have over 50 million Americans today who can't have, do not have regular access to a physician. We have many more who can't find a dentist. Meanwhile, if we were not depleting the medical infrastructure of third world countries, bringing doctors and dentists from those countries in here, our entire primary health care system would be in even worse shape than it is uh, right now. Uh, Madam President, I did want to say a word 
uh, about legislation that we will be introducing next week. I'm proud to uh, tell you that we have 15 uh, original co-sponsors. I hope we will have more in the next few days, which essentially begins to address the crisis in primary health care by significantly expanding a program that Senator Kennedy developed in the 1960s, which has widespread support, not just from Democrats, but from Republicans, not just from President Obama, who was a co-sponsor of similar type legislation last year, uh, but from Senator McCain, who talked about community health centers during his campaign, and President Bush was very supportive of the concept. So we have widespread support, and now is the time to go forward and say that we will have a federally qualified community health center in every underserved area in America. And by expanding the number of FQHCs from about 1,100 to 4,800, at the end of the day, by providing primary health care, dental care, mental health counseling, and low-cost prescription drugs, Mr. President, do you know what we do? We save money. We save substantial sums of money because we keep patients out of the emergency room. We keep patients out of the hospital because we are treating their illnesses at an early stage rather than allowing them to become ill and then spending huge sums of money when they end up in the hospital. And I'm very proud that we have uh, Senator Kennedy uh, as a co-sponsor, Senators Durbin, Harkin, Schumer, Kerry, Boxer, Inouye, Leahy, Mikulski, Casey, Cardin, Wyden, Brown, Begich, and Burris, uh, and uh, Wyden as well, and I hope we will have more. This is legislation that we can pass. This is legislation which has historically had bipartisan support because we all know that primary health care giving people access to doctors, dentists, low-cost prescription drugs is the way not only to keep people healthy, it is a way to save billions and billions of, do uh, of, do of dollars. So, um, Mr. President, uh, let me just conclude by saying I would hope very much that we support this S-CHIP legislation. It will save us money by enabling kids to get to the doctor before their problems become much more acute. It is the right thing to do, and it is the beginning, I think, of the United States trying to join the rest of the industrialized world and saying that health care must be a right of all people, all people, rather than a privilege of just a few. Uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor.